Hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, it's our pleasure to have you here um, as we discuss immersive audio for virtual reality. We have a great panel here. I think I'll start with perspective chapter one, just super briefly. Um, uh, Morris and I met, and, and Morris had this. I, I, it's an idea which, which you know, has been around in cinema for a while. But it's like, but it, but to have it in VR is like, is like amazing. Which is like to do a first person perspective in VR is like a thousand times more anything that one can do with a conventional camera, um, and 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 so. The idea of like of, of doing empathy piece, um, uh, and and we sort of tested out uh, an idea, and and then you know kind of went into doing this. There, there was a lot of um, there was a lot of a lot of issues happening around around sexual assault last year, and, and as there are every year. I mean, but uh, I live in New York, and the Columbia University thing was happening, and and I really wanted to continue the conversation. And just like this year, and that that is the same thing that fed the um, making perspective chapter two, the misdemeanor, um, it, it, it's, these things keep happening. These things keep happening and, and, and there's a protest and then there's an officer who gets off and then there's a, and it just seems like this cycle that's like only making things worse and, and both of the pieces are really, uh, I think Morris and I are trying to push a conversation um, and, and trying to have you experience these things from, from both people's perspective Will. Yeah, yeah. So the series is designed that you would see a hot button topic from one person's perspective, and then you see that same hot button topic from another person's perspective. So then that gains you a new perspective and a new insight into into a scenario, as, as I think Rose very articulately and well explained. Um, in this film, you go through a series of being each there are four characters, and you experience it from four characters' different perspective, and that kind of I, I, I won't give you a spoiler essentially, but that it, it's it's based on that idea of we see the world differently, and it, 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 it's just a way to use a medium in a way that's incredibly powerful to educate and, and inform people of, of, of how different people see events and how they interact. So Lynette Walworth is uh, uh, an amazing um, artist, really. She's uh, done documentary, um, also done really experiences like, uh, you know, that you could walk in in a dome experience. Um, and so she came together, um, and in, actually in the opening of her piece, she says, I'm not telling, it's not her story. She's, she's telling the story of Neri, who's an aboriginal man. Um, and uh, he's in the outback uh, in the 50s, and he uh, witnesses a nuclear explosion. Um, but the medium uh, being what it is, it really immerses you in what it's like to be uh, in the outback, which is some place that we, uh, most of us here, would never have an opportunity to go to, um, but also to see it from his perspective. As a traditional filmmaker, I've, I've always loved um, sound and always have thought that that is a, a way to, it's something not to be overlooked as, as any maker of content. Um, so to work in it, with Tim and like to you know and in and your team like you know to do this piece and and to work with to work with the atmosphere sound was like just wonderfully mind blowing to me because I it was just uh, I felt like a kid in a candy store a little bit you know um, creating there were things that Morris and I didn't do last year last year we did like a, a you know a, a um, um, traditional mix and uh, and and you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, stereo, no, no Dolby mix, <laughs> and it's and it's fine, but it's it, there's something about being in an environment and feeling the entire environment that this gives you, that is just um, that it just completes the experience. So that for me is what I have to say about that. Yeah, you'll you'll definitely have that aha moment if you haven't heard proper head tracking. It puts you in the location in a way that nothing else can. I mean, you, it is the missing link for just seeing, just literally feeling like you're there, which is incredibly exciting. For most of the work that we do, we're going beyond just being uh, in, in the reality mode. When, when we actually do sound that is uh, super accurate to, to reality, a lot of times it's just not what either the filmmaker wants or it's not actually evoking the, the uh, emotion or communicating what it is that we want to communicate. So at that moment, we have to make a decision and say, we are straying from reality and we are going somewhere else. For our technology, it's very important to be able to straddle both the, the, the realistic as well as the hyper-realistic, the fantastical 
Um, and that's kind of the, one of the goals that, one of the tenets that we're putting forth as we build this technology is to make sure that, you know, in, vir in virtual reality, in, in a way you want the apparatus to almost disappear, um, but for the impact to be there when it needs to be. Is this, is this Hollywood, is it going too far, or is this really kind of what, what we can imagine would be in his own head? It sounds like a simple thing, but it's incredibly complicated when you, when you look deeply into it. And a lot of these projects then go wrong because you spend so much energy trying to make it sound like you're actually there. And that can be such a mistake, but what, what you guys have done is, is taken it to the next level, has really used it to tell a story and really use it to evoke emotion. And that's what I'm, I'm repeating it, but I want to make sure it's so clear that it's, it's so successful in this piece. You're seeing like an amazing amount of vocabulary that is just coming through and editing and the visual and all of that is there. That stuff, we don't have vocabulary yet in VR, but we do have vocabulary in sound. And we, we know about it. Absence of sound has a meaning. meaning. Um, low notes has a meaning. I mean, there are all these things that we're kind of conditioned to. Um, and so it's, it's, it's this weird thing, and I haven't actually kind of come to terms with it, but like, how do you, how do, you do that if, if you have something that means there's such a wide variety of vocabulary there mixed with something that we're just starting to get our feet under us um, and have a, a visual vocabulary? We've, you know, we've been uh, leveraging quite a bit of momentum from uh, Atmos in the cinema and, and, and television. Um, and we found that a number of, you know, the top mixers, Tim included, um, appreciate a lot of the, the features and technologies that Atmos brings, but it's very clear that in virtual reality there's much more that's required. Um, it's, not, it's not just a simple turnkey uh, solution. Um, so I was going to say, Tim, uh, I was going to almost make a joke saying, so it was easy, right, to mix the audio for this. You just put some microphones on the cameras and then we're good. Yeah, absolutely, um, yeah. But I, I, you've, I think, done a great job of alluding to some of the creative uh, decisions that you had to make um, uh, together with Morris and Rose. I think it would be really great for the audience to, to get a perspective on that uh, from a technical, uh, from the technical viewpoint. So anyway, this is a, a quick way for our editors uh, who don't have Atmos on their systems, for example, to, uh, to make some pannings for us uh, prior to going into the mix stage. We've got two police officers and we've got two teenage kids um, who get into this scuffle and one of them ends up getting shot. Uh, and uh, it turns out that, that we really needed to go a little bit further uh, than we had anticipated in terms of the processing on, on the uh, voice of the first person uh, character. We really needed to make it sound a little more muffled. We, uh, we used the, the Dolby Atmos technology to put, you know, put that um, sound of the first person uh, voice in your head close to your ears like this uh, and EQ'd it in a way that made it sound a little bit more resonant as your voice does to yourself. Um, and we wanted a, a very clear distinction between the first person voice and all the other voices. So the first person voice is uh, always sticking with you, right? So no matter where you turn your head, it's always like this. But everybody else is, uh, is, is specifically um, uh, uh, spatialized. So they, their location in the 360 space is uh, pinpointed and tracked uh, based on where they are. So th that difference alone can make it easy to distinguish, okay, who are we with right now? Are we with the kid? Are we with the cop? Uh, and, uh, and just from a sound standpoint, we're able to, to communicate that. So as an example of that, um, here's uh, where we go across a transition. Uh, of one, of the, uh, one of the boys, his name is Damon. We see him in, in uh, Arroyo's perspective here first, and then we go to his perspective when he's on the ground. So you'll notice the sound of his voice change here. Get the fuck off me, I ain't do nothing. You didn't just put your hands on me? You came for me. Get down. Get down now. Okay, now Arroyo switches, and Damon becomes the first person. What the fuck, you a big man? I'm another kid. Put your hands So the cop becomes uh, a spatialized behind us at that moment, and uh, Damon becomes the first person. This is obviously a very potent and emotional um, piece of art. Um, you know, on TV we see people get shot like a hundred times a day and it's kind of not that meaningful. 
Um, but I think this is a great example of how virtual reality kind of introduces, you know, a, a, a special potency that doesn't really exist in television. Um, I, I'm sure you all got a, an appreciation for that um, from the clips that you I mean, saw. That, that scene in the headset is uh, incredibly powerful when you see your own brother shot by a police officer. So it's, yeah, it's exciting. It's an exciting time. What are you excited about in terms of audio and virtual reality and, and this great future that looks so promising and exciting? Um, well, I, I just love the... I, it's so funny because I'm almost creating a piece in my mind around a sound experience. Um, I've been wanting to do this color piece and, um, and so much of it is just sound. And so it's, it's really built on a, on a soundscape. It's really like someone calling you from back here and you turning your head and something, you know, like the, the, the color and sound shifting all around you. And I, and, and I was actually asking about like, like sound cues. We were talking about this, Tim. Sound, sound being cued by your head turning, you know? So if I turn my head this way, if I respond to something this way, there's something that's going to come off, which I hear that right. are in the works. I mean, I mean, for me, I'm fascinated by the tools and the technology and seeing what's happening with it from both sides of the coin. I mean, the technology and also seeing how they're creatively used and seeing how that works together, which is a big success on this project. The Dolby Atmos for virtual reality tools right now are in a very limited beta. There's only a handful of people who have access to them. But in March, we're going to be expanding that beta ever so slightly. Um, we're going to be making the tools more easily accessible and um, uh, usable on uh, hardware other than very expensive mixing stage hardware. Um, and we're right now in the process of collecting um, uh, contact information for people who may want to participate in that beta. And believe me, beyond that beta, there will be another round and ultimately these tools will be made generally available. With that, I just want to thank everyone on the panel. Thank you for coming. Thank you.